So before we dive into this feature, K is releasing a cohort three today of Notion uh, training, and that's live training. So if you're someone that needs some live training sessions inside of Notion, this one will be perfect with you. And you can find all the links to that in the description below. So guys, let's roll into Kehi's tour. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here. Today I'm joined by Kehi and uh, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, big fan and, and I'm humbled to be on the other side of, uh, of the video screen. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really good fun. We're gonna dive into Kehi's um, setup. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Kehi runs Rad Reads. Um, he is not just into Notion, which you'll discover today. He uh, talks all about work, life, and uh, even finance as well. He was in Wall Street for 15 years, wasn't it? Yep, 14 and a half. Blimey, that's dedication. <laughs> and uh, he has uh, he works um, as a contributing editor to the courts as well. So we'll make sure to include that all below. But his most recent work, Notion, on Notion has been particularly very good because uh, he includes lots of articles in Rad Reads. Um, he has been doing some YouTube videos and also he's about to release on January 21st, cohort number three of his Notion course. So it's going to be really exciting. Um, maybe you can fill in a few of the gaps uh, of, of things that I might have missed there. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll start with, real briefly with, with my background where, um, you know, I was, now I'm going to date myself, but I was reading about productivity before Google existed. Uh, oh so like in the days of, of like before blogs really, mostly like David Allen being the seminal work that they kind of kicked everything off for me. And so oh, I always had that through line and I would teach uh, uh, Wall Street analysts how to uh, use task managers during like oh. lunch and learn. So it's been oh, like goodness. a narrative, it's a consistent narrative, even though yeah. I was in the hedge fund industry, it's a consistent narrative uh, thread. So. Uh, so yeah, so like I, like you said, Kehi, I'm the creator of the blog Rad Reads. It's an email newsletter about how to live a, a more examined life. So challenging all of our assumptions about work, about money, about productivity, and ultimately who we are. Uh, and so that gives me, you know, a, a playground, a sandbox to, to experiment with, ma with many different topics. And uh, yeah, I, I fell in love with Notion um you know probably about a year ago uh and it really you know as a former cs major the tables like really mm. got me i'm like oh i loved microsoft access in the early 90s like i loved yeah. it and then it kind yeah. of died on the vine and so to see it come back uh and to be able and 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 ivan says it it's like a marriage of engineering and design I think yeah. that that's like a deadly combination, right? It's like a nerd oh, who's yeah. creative. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or it's like someone who can write who's also has visual uh, skills. So to, to put the two together is just such a, uh, it just got me so fired up. And as a small business owner, I, I'm not kidding. I have no affiliation to Notion. I'm in the app yeah. four to five hours a day. I mean, my, yeah. my entire life, my business, my network, my, my kids Christmas list, like it's, it's all uh, in Notion because it just, it makes my life so much easier. Yeah. It's like, it's just having like your brain on paper, but on the online for it's amazing, isn't it? it, it I, it's I, absolutely. I saw you the other day, you made like a video on investment tracking in Notion. Like that's mm -hmm. crazy. Like you've been really like pushing the envelope on the uses, right? <laughs> I'm I, I'm definitely I'm definitely definitely trying. Um, I do. I I think again at its core, it's the power of databases, right? Is that that investment dashboard was able to take like the companies you cover, the math behind them, the notes that you take on them, and all the files that are related to them, plus yeah. your tasks that string together. I'm just like. And what uh, you used to have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for that software that wasn't even customized for you. And so that is what's so exciting that like with a little, it's not easy as you and yeah. I know, but it's not, <laughs> it's not that hard. Like, yeah. Uh, and so that like that sweet intersection is what makes, what makes Notion magical to me. And then, then the sky's the limit on, on what you can build. 100%. And, and you mentioned there that you uh, found it roughly about a year ago. Um, I'm just curious, like, how did you discover it and what sort of, what was the driver that got you downloading it and using it actively? Because I'm guessing you used a few productivity apps before, right? 
absolutely. Uh, so I think I, someone first sent it to me when it was first hunted, I think like two and a half years ago or maybe three yeah. years ago. And I, I didn't get it. I'm like, what is this thing? And, you know, I was still, you know, I was a heavy Evernote user for six, yeah. seven, eight years. But the thing about Evernote is that every time I stepped foot into Evernote, like my, my stress levels went up. I, I, could, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't link things. And it just like, you know, it was, it was like using a Netscape browser in the world of Chrome. Like, mm. yeah, it does the same thing, but it doesn't. And I think intellectually too, I was just like, I followed the notion venture story and mm. I, I'm sorry, Evernote venture story. And I just said to myself, like this company's, I don't know, it, it might, it's probably not going away, but it's not reinvesting. It's to mm. catch up with the time. And I was a big Airtable fan. I am a big Airtable fan, but Airtable was the, the, focus was a little bit too specific for me to be able to use it in my everyday life. I'm not like your guest, uh, Chris, what's his name? Chris Dunsey, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not Mental like Chris <laughs> where I can't, I can't do that in everything, nor do I want to. But I, yeah. that, there was just like that marriage of like spreadsheets, tables, and Word documents. Plus the thing that really got me, I think people under discuss this on Notion, is that it really is like a content management um, uh, software like uh, like WordPress. It's a lightweight yeah. WordPress, and so I saw. I kind of saw it all put like fall into place, and yeah. I was. And then I started to play with it, and you know, it's just so intuitive once you get over that steep that that like little initial hump. That yeah. I was just like, this is a beautiful. Like, the you know the the experience was stunning. It was beautiful, and um and it really brought out my best instincts, and, and I was I was just so pumped. And you were hooked for life. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was hooked. And, and we can talk about, like, it's not without its, its drawbacks. Uh, and yeah, I don't yeah. want to, 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 to represent that. that there are some, not significant, but there are some drawbacks mm. that, that we all have to consider um, as we use it. So I'm a sanguine about those as well. Yeah. I mean, like, with, like we all sport it to be absolutely perfect. And it's sort of heading in that direction. And they're quite, I think, like, I feel like the team are quite nimble in terms of, like, their update cycles. And, like, they're super responsive on Twitter. So that's all, always Absolutely. good news, right? Absolutely, yeah. And they, they yeah. listen, right? Mm. Uh, it seems like they, they listen. I think the big test will be, you know, 3.0. Uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> because there, there, are some, there are a few core things that, that everyone needs to be, you know, for it to kind of continue on the trajectory. So yeah. I think that... I think they'll deliver, but yeah. again, we'll, time will tell. That's it. I think you've probably got a few people watching it going, 3.0. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah um, but it's, a, it's all in their Twitter, right? I'm not saying anything. That that's it. Long. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like right now, like what would you say before we jump into it? What, yeah. what would you say your sort of main uses of the application are? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that... Um, personal knowledge management. Okay. So that is like everything I read, uh, the notes that I take, um, the, my family's information, my business yeah. information, my tax information. So, um, so basically it's like the repository for all, uh, all of my information. That would be use case one. Uh, use case two would be um, both public and private CMS. And so I'll fire up pages very quickly on the public side. I, I sometimes use Notion instead of using WordPress just because it's quicker and it's cleaner. Um, and so I'll do that. And then private CMS, I have a coaching business. So I will use it as an interplay, uh, as a way to, uh, to interact with, uh, with my clients. So, and then the third would fall into kind of like a mashup uh, of the two, but workflow. And so I have yeah. small like contributors that work on rad reads, like the interns and, and, and colleagues. And so it's kind of the, the place. So for example, my weekly newsletter, I personally don't even touch my mm -hmm. like uh, convert kit. I do it all in a notion and I, my colleague takes the last step and puts it, uh, puts it in, yeah. in, in convert kit. So with, that's why I like spend so much time. Uh, in the app and then little, little things like trackers and habit formation and things like that yeah. are just like I, I, because I'm, once I'm in it in the environment I use lots of little cues 
um, to really kind of get me to, to where I'd like to be, like where my future self would like to be. Fantastic. Well, that sounds really exciting. Well, um, yeah, I mean, take it away, like in terms of showing us around, because it'd be okay. wicked. Yeah. Perfect. So the way I'll start, start us off is um, I, I try to use a minimalist setup where uh, I try not to use too many tables um, and I try not to uh, use too many pages. And if I do, I house them within, uh, within databases. Oh, within, uh, I try to not to use too many pages and I house them within a central, central database. So as you see, I, um, a, a prior guest of yours and, and mutual friend of ours, uh, uh, Tiago Forte, very, very strongly. If you think about what my philosophy is, it's, it's an integration of like David Allen's getting things done and Tiago Forte's uh, para method. Um, and so uh, if you see down here, I'm going to scroll down. I have basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven or eight master tables that dictate um, a large, large chunk of my activity. So uh, so ta if you go into tasks, it's just like a giant list of tasks and I'll show you how it's stitched together. If you go into CRM, it's just a list of, uh, of people that I'll pull, you know, into other places. If you go into uh, library, it's everything, uh, that I grab using, um, let's do the master list, using, uh, the notion clipper. And so just like tons and tons and tons of, so if, and, and again, the beauty of having this master table is like my atomic unit of work is reading, right? It's reading for my, my own knowledge. It's reading for my newsletter and it's reading to like do things to make my business better. All the reading can go in one place. Then I'll use different tags and so on to customize it. So I would say 80% of my information is in these, you know, eight, eight tables um, and if you see they have the name JJ, uh, it's because the notion search is slow. And so oh, okay. I, I often need to just access my tables, my master tables. So if I yeah. search control P JJ, it will immediately, um, it's going to be slow over the, over our internet connection, but it is, sure. it immediately pulls up my master tables, which mm -hmm. is where 80% of my information lives. So it's like a little workaround just to, to get faster speed. Uh, on oh, okay. search speed. Yeah. So, so those are my tables. And then um, once you go in, then there's another key table, which is para. And for those of you who aren't familiar, it's just a, a folder delineation of projects, areas of responsibility and um, resources. And so if you go in here, you can see my live projects. You know, market cohort three of the course, not, uh, you know, also like I'm going, I want to go to Coachella. Um, and then like I said, I'm working on a money series for courts. And so each of these will have different notes. Uh, and so if you go into market cohort three, which is where I've been spending a lot of my time, you know, I tend to do like my file cabinet. I might have like, I call the lazy to do list where I'm just kind of like a, almost like a scratch pad. Um, I use toggles a lot, uh, and then like some course ideas, like make a really good part demo. What, what does the homework look like? Again, this is, this is like a, a, a simple little no, note taking app, but at, note taking capabilities, but at least I know that I can always find it in my projects. Um, what you then, um, in my areas, areas is probably, uh, the air, the place that I spend the most amount of time when I'm, when I'm in notion, because it's, if you follow Tiago's definition of areas, it's a part of your life where there's a minimum threshold of a minimum standard that needs to be held, but there's cool. not like a necessarily a due date. So for example, my health or my relationship, uh, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with my wife. Very, very important. In the Eisenhower framework, it's the important and not urgent category of your yeah. life. Things that are important that don't have deadlines. Um, and so if you go in here, I could pull you into, you know, I talked a lot about money, um, managing money. I call, you know, family CFO. So again, this is a page within one giant table called PARA. Uh, and if you go in here, you'll see, let me open it as a page you will see, this is, I wish Notion would hide all these tags on uh, pages, <laughs> but you go in here and these are the tasks 
that I've pulled in, you see JJ tasks from my task list. So I can assign a task to an area. So linking two tables of my life. And then I can pull this. Um, this is just a filtered view that just says, um, grab me all the tasks uh, that are in the family CFO bucket. Mm -hmm. And so it pulls off of one table. And then by the way, I should probably, uh, there's no task is not complete, right? That, that would be yeah. the clean way to do it. And then, uh, you know, it's, a, it's not like I was emailing with you, like my room's not always the cleanest, but if you go in here, um, you know, I will have tables that take care of like my tax deductions with the receipts so that when, I, when it's time to file my taxes, it's very uh, easy. This is like a really fun part, fun thing where um, I do uh, um, with my wife, we, uh, every month we talk about our monthly uh, expenses. And so we'll, we'll just have like a log of like, what were our big expenses? And I X some of these out just um, for privacy, but uh, what were some of our big expenses in September, 2019, August, 2019, July, 2019. And in this, uh, I use, you need a budget, which is a budgeting app. I do a monthly export of my transactions and I just mm -hmm. aggregate the spending uh, so that I can quickly see, pull down, um, I can quickly get to um, my total spending for, for yeah. each year. And so again, power like tables that are nested within pages that let you look at different things. Um, if you go back into Para, let's see some other fun things. Product, right, which is Rad Reads, uh, which is the website, the newsletter, and things like that. Once again, you go in, you see all the tasks that are related to my product yeah. to Rad Reads. Again, coming from that same master table, um, and uh, you know here product like product inspiration i grab good you know like it's a, a mood board so to speak or product uh inspiration so you know like i love this uh landing page and so i click into it here's here's a picture of the landing page and this is a little, a little bit more static but this is just like a clipper that helps me organize um my information uh another one like i like how this guy this is a friend of mine how he set up a, a this is his pinned tweet and so I know that like, I want to have like a good pin tweet with a video. And so I know to come back to this tweet and I mean, I've captured it using the, the, uh, the notion, um, web clipper. So again, that would be, that's like my, my para setup. So when you ask me like the use cases, it's like the, the major, the, it's like a big chunk of my time, uh, organizing like all of my information and my tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. Then I'll move to the, you know, private CMS and public CMS, if that's okay. That's uh, perfect. So, uh, so private CMS would be, uh, I'm, I have a coaching practice. And so this was where it totally cracked open. So I used to, so part of my coaching package is that I write you a detailed book of your life as we go through our coaching together. Um, so it's like, it's part of the package. It's pricey. Uh, but, but I didn't want it to just be like, Oh, we have a conversation and then that's, that's it. Right. I wanted it to be much more like an intensive program. So I used to run this, uh, these dashboards using Google sheets embedded into Google docs. Uh, but Google Docs is not mobile friendly. It's hard to navigate. It's not that clean. It's not that fun to input. Believe it or not, I'm sure you know this, embedding a, a Google Sheet into a Google Doc is not as easy as it should be. Um, mm. And it's definitely not a slash command like in Notion, <laughs> create link database. And so when Notion came out, I immediately saw an opportunity to move my coaching clients onto this. So this is a representative dashboard uh, of uh, the coaching relationship that I have um, with, with one of my seven clients. And so, you know, simple stuff like we'll have some big ideas, some objectives. Um, we have anytime there's a reading that I recommend for the client, I just go into this, uh, to my library and I could just set a few flags and say, hey, share this article with this client. So again, I never have to re-import a story again. Once it's in my system, share it with a client, share it with my newsletter, share it with myself to, to, to build my own knowledge. 
Uh, and so you'll see he has, uh, this client has this customized library of things that are, that he, he should read. Um, he's got his customized uh, to-do list. Uh, again, that was actually very hard to do in Google Sheets. And then he has uh, detailed, this is like the, the book of his life. Uh, <laughs> and again, this would be like more similar to, uh, to Google, Google Docs. But again, you know, we use callouts, we use the, the formatting. It just, it makes life so much, uh, so much cleaner, so much easier. You know, we'll use a little call. The format actually makes a big difference. The toggles uh, make a diff mm. big difference. So these are private pages that I share with individual clients. Um, and then there's uh, no, uh, Notion as a public CMS. And so, like I said, there are times when I'd rather do something, a public website, you know, accessible to the entire internet uh, via, um, via Notion than via WordPress. So yeah. I do a little job board where I just see a lot of jobs, you know, kind of sitting on top of a pretty big community. And so people want jobs. People want jobs that other people have recommended, that other people, it's almost like this, the VC scout model. There's just like when you put a bunch of smart people in a room, they're all seeing interesting opportunities and I'm the central hub to get these. And so I just collect these jobs as they come along. Again, I just clip them into the Notion Clipper. And then I, uh, my, my colleague adds a few tags here. So like tech, design, San Francisco. And boom, you have a website that probably gets 2,000 uniques a month. Uh, yeah. Just uh, that takes me uh, five minutes a week to update, seven minutes. Yeah. And I tried to do this in WordPress. I was doing bulleted lists. So obviously there's no filtering. You can't, do you imagine, I mean, you know, WordPress, you imagine mm -hmm. getting uh, 18 little thumbnails to, you know, like it's just impossible. Like yeah. you need a developer. Um, and so, um, and so I, uh, I, I'm so keen to just launch these websites uh, really quickly. Uh, I'll show you one other quick one. Um, you, yeah. you get a productivity stack this one doesn't have a jj uh and, on it. And it rad reads productivity stack and, and they're so also it, like massively cheap to do as well right in in what regards cheap in in the well it's not going to be like you know you're not running a the wordpress sort of oh yeah, yeah every yeah, month yeah. right oh it, it's free i mean it's yeah. the price of my notion <laughs> subscription yeah five bucks so, a month yeah so here we Pretty crowdsource cool. and look, look at that, even with the branding, right? I can stay on brand. I mean, I can't own my URL yet. So that's like slightly annoying, but I went to our Slack group and I said, what are your favorite, you know, to-do list? Actually, what we were talking about before, what are your favorite to-do list, calendar apps, text expanders, uh, Chrome extensions. And I just created, put them in a giant table and then look at this beauty. Oh, wow. That looks good. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I get chills, man. Like you can't do this on WordPress. You can't, no. Uh, it and you, and even if you could, you can't update it on WordPress. Like hmm. you have to go in into the code and the bullets uh, and all that. So this whole thing took like two hours uh, to make. And again, it's, it's actually, to, to be very specific, I use this as a lead magnet on Rad Reads. And it's, a, it's phenomenal. Who wouldn't want to click on like the 47 list of uh, 47 uh, app list of, you know, productivity tools. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that is, uh, that's the product that, that is uh, another way for that. I use it as uh, the CMS. And then can I show you one more thing? Oh, please do. Please do. Uh, so <laughs> the last thing that's gotten me really excited, uh, I'm going to get a little notion geeky on you now, but, um, <laughs> I have been playing a lot with um, building formulas off of the last modified date Ooh. because as you go, so last modified is one of the few dynamic fields in Notion, right? You yeah. could have like last modified date as an input, but then you have to type in December 9th, you know, 2019 is when I last modified this page. Like the reality is like, you're probably not going to do that that often. And so if you look here, you see how these tasks have been surfaced as overdue. Mm. And the reason why they're overdue is because, let's take my kids, uh, Sarai and Amelie. Uh, their area, if you look at the formula, 
Yeah. Uh, the last update, this column here, which is dynamically generated. Uh, and if you add the review frequency, so 30 is uh, less than today. Uh, mm. I'm sorry, it's greater than, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if it's less than today, it's, uh, it's overdue. And so as, so this dynamically refreshes, cause it's like, okay, hey, guess what, Kay? Uh, November 3rd was the last time you updated the Soraya anomaly file. Um, yeah. and you want it monthly, one month plus November 3rd is December 3rd. It's December, whatever, 14th or today, uh, you're overdue. And so filter it to the top. So then I can yeah. go in and I can look and, you know, did we do learn numbers? We, you know, we did do learn numbers. Uh -huh. So I'm going to click that, check out what happened. Last update. Today's not the 14th. Sorry. It's the ninth. Um, <laughs> Uh, last update, the ninth, and watch. It popped oh, out of beautiful. overdue. Yeah. So it's uh, almost like actively trying to keep you ahead of the game. And totally. Aware of, yeah. It's a, it's a little like, um, uh, I like to think of it as um, James Clear's cues for habit formation. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of, you know, like if you want to work out more, put your gym, put your gym shoes by, or your running shoes by the door. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as you walk by your door, like, oh yeah, I wanted to run. Yeah. So here it's like the ones on top that check mark. Um. Oh, I haven't looked at my website in a, in a week. So yeah. uh, let me go in and, and and again, there might not be much behind it, right? It's not a necessary an extensive task list, but it's yeah. just like you know important, not urgent. My kids, right? Teaching my yeah. daughter number is like that's important, not urgent, right? No one's yeah. gonna <laughs> come knocking on my door. There's no rent collector if I forget to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and I want to show you one other place where I use this. Yeah. yeah. So if I go into uh, JJ Library, which is like my massive, massive reading list, I mean, this is like hundreds of articles, 209 articles since I started using Notion. Uh, this is where I run my ideas uh, for, for rad reads and, and do all my curation and also things that I want to read. So if I go in uh, to here uh, into, let's see, where is it? Uh, reading list. What I've done here is I've combined the two things. So I've used the last modified date again to let me know if something is outside of a window of modification, right? Yeah. Uh, so if I haven't touched it, right, I haven't touched this article, the passion economy, the future of work since okay. October 30th. Uh, okay. So, but I add another wrinkle, um, mm -hmm. because I'm taking all this little metadata about things that I read, like the trophy being a simple one. The trophy is just, if someone it's the most read article in each issue of Brad reads. So that's a signal to me. That's like, this is a powerful article. Someone, someone like uh, thousands of people voted, upvoted this as a great story. So then I flag it in my system. And what I do, you know, these other ones are just like, this finger is like, you want to read this for your business. This hand up is like, looks promising. Uh, this is the issue that it corresponds to from, from Rad Reads, like the number issue. And then what I do is I've, given each of these clicks a score. Mm -hmm. So if it, got, if it has a trophy, it's worth three. Uh, if it has the hand up, it's 0. 0.5. Um, okay. And then I roll the scores up to get a total score up here. Yeah. And so now what do we have? We have an algorithm, mm -hmm. heavy air quotes, uh, <laughs> an algorithm that has surfaced to the top based off different signals, yeah. things that are good to read, but as also said, you haven't, you haven't touched this article in the past month. Yeah. And so what I could do now is like, okay, yeah, that's right. I haven't touched this article. So I could go in and read it. I could add a note to it, or I could just like snooze it. So I have the clicker, so I could just click it. Ah, okay. And then by clicking it, switch a checkbox i've modified yeah. the page and so you see it popped out of the window and it will come back oh. in one month that's very smart yeah that's quite yeah yeah because you've set up so, filters there right exactly but they're they're both dynamic because they're time-based mm, and yeah. they're enhanced filters 
because they drive, they, they basically um, rank off of combined metadata. Yeah. So you sort of, sort of could have maybe hacked the recurring reminders or lack of. Probably. Almost. Yeah. There's probably <laughs> a way to do that off of last modified. Yeah. With like the oh, clicker. Yeah. But I'll let uh, I'll let smarter uh, notion geeks figure that one out because I, <laughs> yeah. I, I do still use for recurring tasks. I still use OmniFocus. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Cause yeah, you, you know, you need to have that recurring ability. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm a big recurring task guy. I probably have like 75 recurring tasks Blimey. each year. So, um, yeah. so I'm it's a very important. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I love, I love that setup. Um, the, the things I really liked about it were like how simple you set up everything on, on the sidebar and, and the fact that not many people have like the library abilities, which like, like ad, actually having a dedicated area for the, you know, the reading list, you know, bookshelf, CRM and like, so that you can pull it into the, the relevant stuff like para. So that's like really awesome. And, and I also, I also like how you use the, like when you're inside of each pages in para, it's almost like, it's almost like your notebook, like a physical notebook, the way you're using it. Cause it's like, it's a little bit scattered, but it's quite like nice to have that. It's almost mm-hmm. like a, like it literally looks like a notebook. It's really good. Yeah. And that's what, um, that's the cool thing about one of the cool things about notion is you basically can recreate Evernote's notebook structure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that, that is, um, I do, I do, I'm heavily, I'm a minimalist. Like I don't need, I, I don't want to see too much information at any point in time. Yeah. I want to have to take like, I, but I want to know where to go once I get it. So between the shortcuts, the favorites, and by the way, my favorite bar would normally only have, I have a rule of like under yeah. only five or less on oh, favorites. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's only loaded up for, it was just for the demo to remind me like which things uh, I wanted to show you. Okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very much a notion minimalist. Yeah. Yeah. I like that though. Cause I think people can get carried away with the, the expansive nature of it. And yeah, I think it's good to keep it sort of, you know, close to home. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's where, where I've seen a lot of notion setups. That's where yeah. I, every page becomes an amalgamation of other pages and, yeah. and and like that that's where it gets starts to get really messy because like i've seen countless examples of people that can't find the page that they're looking for yeah yeah because oh, it's yeah. been embedded and nested into like eight levels deep with like archives and yeah. and, and if that if your note-taking system prevents you from finding the page that you're looking for we've got a serious problem <laughs> yeah yeah that's it. it it's like inception like you're going like two worlds deep exactly in a dream. <laughs> exactly but but i think i i don't think people talk about that enough on notion but yeah. i've you know given the work that i do i've seen a lot of like like black hole notion like yeah. uh, maybe we coined the term like a notion black hole right notion black hole i love it <laughs> and uh, yeah i mean that that's uh i think that's a good takeaway for people is just to try not to be involved in the black hole eventually. yes and oh and may i offer a tip on that <laughs> yes so please, yeah. th- there's um i think it's naval who said it on on the joe rogan podca- podcast uh he said uh don't give me the book give me the podcast oh give yeah. me the blog post don't give me the blog post give me the podcast don't give me the podcast give me the tweet which is like you think you have a book's worth of ideas but you actually yeah. just have one tweet's worth and so yeah. I, I, I have my notion version of that, which is <laughs> don't, don't make it a database, make it a table. Don't make yeah. it a table, make it a page. Uh, don't make it a nested page. Don't make it a nested page, make it a regular a page with toggles. <laughs> don't make it a page with toggles, just make it a page. Yeah. <laughs> so people can go through that. And <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, um, Kay, where can everyone find you after, after this podcast? Uh, well, awesome. After this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they know what you mean yeah. uh they can head over to uh so the, if if they're interested uh in the notion course it's notion.courses uh yeah. and the signups the signups there will get you notified for when we launch but it's also i write a weekly notion newsletter 
Uh, and so, uh, so they can get that uh, at notion.courses. The more elaborate, um, you know, Radreads um, empire is at radreads.co. Um, and I would encourage people that is where you'll capture all the themes. Uh, there's a really 18,000 person newsletter, uh, with, you know, money, personal finances, productivity, creativity, entrepreneurship. That's like the, the broader umbrella. So notion.courses and radreads.co. And I'm probably most active on um, Twitter, uh, where if you tweet at me, I will respond with a loom video on notion. I promise. I always, I've <laughs> oh, never wow. said no. Um, <laughs> so as long as you say, please. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and my Twitter is K H E M A R I D H, which I'm sure you'll put in the show notes. Lovely. Yeah, they'll, they'll all be available below. So, uh, everyone can go and enjoy those, but thanks Kay for coming on. It was, it was really great to have you. I, I enjoyed your insights and, and we'll have you on again. I'm, I'm definitely sure. Awesome. Thank you, Francesco, for the incredible work that you do and for, uh, for letting me be, join this esteemed group of guests that you had. <laughs> No, no, no. You, you're definitely overdue. So get, we have to get on again. It'll be good. Fun. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. See ya.